Hey, my name is Mark. I'm a pro opera singer turned voice actor. This is Guessing Who the Character Is from The Music Alone, one of my favorite series on this channel, which is all about video game music and video game appreciation. Today, we're going to be listening to Camille's theme. I saw it really requested, and I'm excited to listen to it. Never heard it. Don't know anything about Camille. You don't believe me? I can't help you there. Here we go. Right, listen to that. I venture to guess Camille has suffered a lot in her life. There's a lot of pain in this sound. There's a lot of suffering in this sound. Suspicion, curiosity, there's some part of her that's very vengeful. How am I gathering that? Well, first of all, the harpsichord. The harpsichord is an old instrument, which in my mind is hearkening back to a younger time, perhaps. Then on top of that, but, um, the rhythmic intensity there, the rhythmic pattern, to me indicates long short, long short. It's a hmm sound. Yeah, so like, look at the rhythmic motion here, right? A determination, focus, cunning, willful, opinionated, badass, strong, independent person. I'm gathering that from the rhythmic intensity of that. And also if you look at how the violin is playing, there's a strength in that sound based on where I perceive the violin pitch-wise to be, that music to me indicates a strength and, and, and almost almost a ruthlessness because there's a, there's no like long boy right like there's a there's a danger here But that right there, there's a pain in that sound. I don't know why, because I don't know her lore at all, but right, that's a little four note pain and suffering. For what reason, I have no clue.
Yeah, there's something about this that is involved in some sort of suffering or tragedy, whether it befell her or whether it befell someone she loved or some family member. There's an aristocratic quality, the harpsichord, that indicates to me class, nobility, I'm unsure. But those are the takeaways just from the music. Let's watch the champion spotlight really quick. This is Camille. She's got hook shots and giant blades instead of legs. Oh, shoot. And if she's coming after you, she's gonna cut you down. Welcome to the League of Legends Champion Spotlight, featuring Camille, the Steel Shadow. Damn. <clears throat> How's she walk with knives for feet? Camille's passive is adaptive defenses. Camille's basic attacks on champions grant a shield against her opponent's primary damage type. That's not telling me very much. Clan Pharos understands sacrifice. Most of the family's wealth came through harvesting a rare crystal from the Brackern, a creature native to Sur Shurima. These hex crystals, or, or first crystals, contained power normally only wielded by those born with innate magical ability. After Camille's great-great-aunt lost an arm during an early expedition, her sacrifice inspired the Pharaoh's family motto, For family will I give. The Brackern were a limited resource, and Camille's family had to augment the crystals they had accumulated. Utilizing shadow investments in chemtech and runic alchemy, they developed less power Powerful but easier to make synthetic hex crystals. Yet there were consequences. As the eldest surviving child of Clan Pharaoh's masters, Camille received every educational advantage. She had exceptional tutors, learning to speak several foreign languages and play the Cellovina at a concertmaster level. Mm, that explains the class and the elegance in the harpsichord. Camille also learned to read and write ancient Shuriman while assisting her father on digs in the Odin Valley. When Camille was 25, augmented Zonite thugs attacked her and her father intent on stealing lucrative trade secrets. Camille's father succumbed to his wounds and in anguish her mother died soon after. Stevan began clan became clan master and he doubled the clan's research in human hex tech augmentations, eager to prove himself as a strong leader. Stephen being Camille's younger brother. Camille requested hex tech augmentation from Hakim to push her beyond her human limitations. Hakim was instantly enamored with her and they bonded over the preparations and late night stories of Shurima and eventually Camille returned to Hakim's feelings. Their affair grew reckless as they knew the surgery would conclude their time together. Hakim would move on to other projects and Camille would once again be fully committed to the principal intelligencer's duties. More than that, Hakim worried that in carving away Camille's heart he might remove her humanity. Hakim proposed marriage and for her to run away. Camille was torn. Stephen had no such conflict as he needed Camille to execute his vision. When he learned of the secret proposal, he devised a plan. The next time Camille and Hakim were together, Stephen set himself up to be attacked. When she saw her brother bruised and bloodied, Camille recognized what could happen with her when her attention was divided. Hakim pleaded with Camille, but she wouldn't listen. For family she would give, she ended her relationship, insisting her surgery go forward. He was the only one who could safely perform the operation, and so he excised Camille's heart and replaced it with Hextech, then resigned. When she awoke, the lab she and Hakim had shared was abandoned. Camille focused on her work. She took on further refinements, including bladed legs, grapple spindle hips, and others, and other minor hex augmentations, leading some to wonder how much of the woman was left. Camille's missions became darker and more deadly. She did not age, but the years were not so kind to her brother. Yet even as Stephen's body grew more frail, his iron grip on the clan remained. Camille uncovered the depth of Stephen's betrayal and realized his machinations were no longer in the family's best interests. She discarded the last sentiment she felt towards her brother. After installing her favorite grandniece as clan master, Camille now runs the family's public affairs as well as its more shady operations as a solver of difficult problems. She embraces her more than human transformation and the cutting judgment it affords her, but a strange mortal keening in her head's tech heart may yet prove a troubling portent. Regardless, Camille refuses to sit idle and gains invigoration from well-executed industrial espionage, a fresh brewed cup of tea and long walks in the gray. Wow, okay, first of all, I swear I did not know any of that. That's fascinating because you can hear the pain again with these short rhythmic patterns. In fact, let's go back. I'm trying something new with this. I want to go back and re-listen to the beginning. So that right there could actually be this like pseudo heart that she has, this hex heart.
And this melodic lick could easily be her responsibility to her family. Or her battle with herself, because she probably still, somewhere inside of her, still loves Hakim. And also there's the dangerous in solving problems quality in this too. This, this part right here is for sure her transformation and her change. Yeah, ruthless, unrelenting, like the things need to get done and so she gets them done, you know what I mean? I'm gonna stop there with the music. All that to say, like this league stuff is just really diverse and expansive and really interesting to read. And again, I don't literally know nothing about League of Legends, only what I've covered on this channel and well, and the, the negative things, but I don't, you know, I don't get involved with that. So it's really curious to hear this music and then read about these characters. I hope you enjoyed this. I love this series. As always, thanks so much. There's more on this League of Legends playlist here. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Bye.